Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're looking to break into the field of data analysis or you want to take your data career into the next phase, you are in the right place. Today I'm going to walk you through exactly how to tailor your data analyst or a business analyst resume that will give you the boost and will be noticed by the recruiters and will actually get you the interview calls. So let's dive right in. As you can see on the screen, this is the resume template that I created on Canva and there is one more tab. This is the resume template I created in the Google Docs. So I'll share the link for both of them. And the best part is you can edit this document and tailor according to your details. And so for that, you don't have to create from scratch. And this is the template which is really important for a data analyst or a business analyst. If you're a fresher, you don't have any work experience, right? So how to show that in the resume, which will not falter. So if you see on the Canva side, so first of all, it will be your name, Emily Watson, and tell the position, data analyst, business analyst. It is very important because recruiter, when they open your resume, it will directly show that you are a business analyst you are a data analyst, right? After that, in a one liner, you have to tell your address, address uh, by that you mean city and the country, that's it. You don't have to tell the complete address, right? And then the phone number, email ID, then LinkedIn link and then portfolio link. So these are very important. So if you don't have any portfolio website, so you should have something. For example, you can have GitHub, you can have your portfolio website. So share that link over here. In terms of LinkedIn, it is very important for you to have a very professional kind of a link. It should not be like Emily Watson, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you're not getting your name as your LinkedIn domain, just write something which makes it meaningful, right? Same with your email ID. It should not be like uh, transformers123 at the gmail.com. So it should be uh, similar to your name. It should be like Emily Watson or Emily Watson123 at the gmail.com, right? So once you're done with this section, this is the summary section. So if you zoom in, so this will show a thing about you, like what exactly you are. So it is like detail oriented data analyst with a strong foundation in data manipulation and visualization using Excel, Power BI and SQL. Proficient in transforming complex data sets into actionable insights and passionate about leveraging data to drive business decisions. So this will automatically tell the recruiters what is your interest in, right? So this section is not very important if you're adding the cover letter with your resume. So that will be taken care of by the cover letter. So you can remove this section and you can directly start with your skills, right? So it depends if you're just sharing the resume, then I believe it is important to have one or two liner about yourself, but many say don't use the summary. So I'll keep this up to you. I keep it if I'm not sharing the cover letter. So it gives the recruiter some kind of base to understand the person. And then this is very important section that is skills. So you can mention all your skills like SQL, Python, Excel, whatever you know. So you can tell your uh, technical skills, you can tell your uh, verbal skills if you are good in something else. So just tell according to the job you're applying for. So for example, you're applying for a data analyst and they need someone who is proficient in DAX and Power BI. So you have to mention Microsoft Power BI, data modeling, DAX, Power Query on the top, right? And this is really important that you have to tailor your resume on the basis of the job description. So you can't just uh, have one resume for all the job applications, right? So that is important. So once you're done with your skills section, second section is projects. So if you're a fresher, you don't have work experience. So let's assume you have less than one year of work experience. So this sections become very important. So if you have more than two years of work experience, then I believe you should not have a, a project section like this. I don't have project section in my resume. So, so if you're a fresher, keep projects and tell intuitive and nice 
projects that you have worked on so for example you have worked on sales dashboard with power bi share the link of it then just mention it if it is a freelance work or it's a personal project and then you have to mention the location where you worked on and then the time duration as well so once you are done with this header you have to explain what you did right so you can just mention that implemented dax measures to calculate year over year growth enabling real time insights into sales trends so it's helping the recruiter to understand that you know these things you have already worked on it even if you have not worked in the corporate world right similarly with this uh, model 2 that is customer segmentation analysis so it is a freelance work that is upwork project and let's say the client was in london uk even if you are not present there so just mention the location like this and then again the timeline and then mention utilize sql to extract and pre-process customer data applied clustering algorithm that is k-means in python so this shows that you know python as well and uh, similarly other two projects are financial forecasting and movie database analysis it is suggested to tailor your projects on the basis of your job description so if they are expecting you to know more about power bi and sql then just try to have more projects related to that otherwise if they expect you to know more about python in depth so show the projects where you have worked on python more right so once your projects section is done so i uh, i just really suggest uh, it should not be more than four projects so four is the max then coming to the work experience section that is uh, you are a student so you are studying at University of New South Wales so you got the job as a teaching assistant so you'll mention the location you'll mention the timeline then you will say that assisted the professor in business intelligence lab sessions helped students understand the concepts of data warehouse and bi tools that is power bi so this shows that you have hands-on experience on these concepts then coming to the next section that is education so you have done bachelors of business administration and you will again mention the timeline you just say from where you did that your education that is university of new south wales comma location major in economics and you can mention your thesis if you have done otherwise you can mention uh, for example you were a committee member of business analytics club or consulting cl club you can mention that as well over here right so then coming to volunteering this is quite important if you're a fresher and uh, even important if you are studying abroad and looking for the jobs because it is important from recruiters perspective they want to have people who have done some volunteering jobs so for example department of health western australia so this will show that you have volunteered and again in the same field right so you have volunteered to analyze data for a local nonprofit helping them understand their impact and improve fundraising strategies so without even working in the corporate world you already have the taste of it right so you can mention the skilled skills utilized that is sql for data extraction excel for reporting and power bi for data visualization so they know that now you have worked on these tools for these things and what was the impact of this project that you worked in as a volunteer that is helped the organization increase donations by providing insights into donor behaviors and preferences right so once you're done with this section you are all set so this is what we have to have as a resume it should be a one page resume if your resume is more than one page recruiters will not see it i can almost guarantee that your two page resume will not be shortlisted even if you have amazing skill set right so coming back to my google doc so it's all same i'll just want to show you one more thing so if you see here we have skills projects work experience education volunteering so there are five sections so in case you have some more area at uh, at the end of the page you can add one more section that is interests so interest can be like currently learning ai 
agents or generative AI work. Uh, I really love hiking. So it shows the recruiter how the the character about you if you're really interested in the new things for example you are a data analyst and uh, you want to showcase yourself as ai enthusiast so it's really a very smart move for you to write currently learning ai agents how to develop them working on gen ai so this will show that you are tech savvy and you can go beyond just data analysis Right, because they are not just looking for a data analyst who can just come in and work on Excel or Power BI. They want someone who can stay with them longer and they can grow with them. Right, so you can later on brainstorm and suggest them, the, hey, this is what we should do. This is what will help grow the company. So they expect you to be all rounder, not just good in data analysis. So it is important for you to show that because this will be like a silent, uh, what we say, virtual salesman for you. Because this is the first point of uh, contact, as we can say, for the recruiters, because they don't know you, but the resume will talk about you to them. Right. So for for them, it is really important to see what actually you bring to the table so skills uh, so you can also also men mention the skills like in this format so if we see this one i had like this and if you see in this uh, you can just mention programming languages and then mention all the languages you know then databases you know mysql ms sql server postgre and then bi and visualization tools like microsoft power bi microsoft excel dynamic arrays pivot tables it is important for you to write all these keywords like data manipulation visualization power bi mysql python sales dashboard then dax sql clustering python this will help you to get noticed and because let's say there are thousands of resume for a particular job but out of thousand resumes randomly on the basis of algorithm the recruiter will choose let's say 100 odd resumes right so you have to be in 100 resumes out of thousand so for that the keywords play a huge role and it should be ATS friendly so what is ATS friendly so if we see on the Google, so if you see here, let's say what uh, is an ATS friendly resume. It is a resume that's easy to scan, meaning it's simply formatted with clearly defined sections and without tables, images, charts, or other formatting objects. So if we go back to our template, so there are no images. So that's the biggest mistake that people do. They keep their uh, photo on the top and that is not a nice way to have your resume so no images no formatting no tables no sidelines so i would say for example if we go back to design mode in canva so you will see there are so many options like this so if i see like this i'll say add as a new page so you might say that this looks so good so interactive and it's so catchy it's so good good to eye right but i would say as a data analyst or anyone who is in data field should not have their resume like this because this is not ATS friendly you should not have your picture you should not have like this like uh, icons like this it is looking good maybe this this kind of resume is good for uh, uh, UI designers or uh, people who really want to be creative the job description expects you to be creative so you can have the resumes like this for them but otherwise keeping it simple is good or if you have something like this in two sections this is again not good because this is not ATS friendly so if you say I have amazing skills I have created one page resume like this still I am not getting the interview calls this might be the reason because it is not ATS friendly again with this one this is so simple and looks so classy right but it is not nice so all these kind of resumes which we, which has two pagers kind of thing this is good so if you see this one so it's quite simple name then having the dis uh, details then having all the sections right so this is good right so depending on the requirement for me what I have experienced for a data analyst business analyst data scientist anything related to data fields 
this format is outstanding so it is simple it is a one page and you have all the things what do you expect so in case you have more than two years of experience what you have to do is just remove this projects section and just uh, add the details in the work experience and this should be on the top right so that's the only difference all right so i just want to add some more things on it so let's say we want to talk about do's and don'ts so if you see tailor your resume to each job application it is important for you to tailor your job it should not it should not be one resume for all the job applications right use a clean professional layout as we were discussing so you don't have to worry about it you just go here just just, just save it and edit right highlight relevant skills and experiences prominently so if you have relevant skills let's say it's a power bi sql python or problem solving just highlight them quantify achievements so if you have worked somewhere and uh, you use power bi to optimize the process so you, re you reduce the time duration that it takes by let's say 20 percent so mention that so you have to quantify that proofread for spelling and grammar errors so any grammatical mistake is a complete no-no so you have to make sure that there is no grammatical mistakes incorporate keywords from job description so what you can do is go to job description and see what are the keywords they are expecting so you can incorporate those keywords in your resume so now coming to the don'ts so avoid including irrelevant work experience so let's say you're applying for data analyst that's why you are listening to this video and you write anything related to let's say law so you were working as a law and this and that so i mean it's good to just mention one line that you worked there but you don't have to mention like a paragraph on it don't use jargon or overused buzzwords so if you write ai ai agents and everything related to uh, related to ai that doesn't mean that you know ai and that doesn't mean that you will get shortlisted right so just make sure that you use it optimized level refrain from adding personal information like age marital status all right so if you're mentioning your phone number your email id that's fine don't use more than one page that's what we discussed anything more than one page is a complete no-no don't use an unprofessional email address so it should be it should sound professional avoid passive language use strong action verbs instead so i'll explain you about what this means so passive language is like i was responsible for managing objects instead you can say managed projects effectively ensuring timely delivery so this is like a strong action verb so you took some action towards it right similarly helped improve processes that doesn't mean anything right streamlined processes enhancing efficiency by 20 percent so this sounds actionable so you did something which helped the company at the end right assisted with data analysis task analyze data to extract actionable insights so you can understand yourself which one sounds better right for the recruiter so what i'll do is these are the three pages i'll share the link of this canva template as well plus this template so you just need to go there and just click and edit and that's it so i hope this video was really helpful for you it was a short crisp video about how you can tailor your resume and in my opinion knowing the skills is very important but if you don't tailor your resume and you're not able to sell yourself nicely uh, then your skills are almost useless so it is very important for you to know what are the important things how you can improve your resume how you can improve your linkedin how you can improve overall personality that you are because all the organizations they look for a complete package they are not just interested in languages or how technically sound you are it is important i mean that's the backbone but apart from that it is the character it is the nature of you how you you know talk to them your personality your resume everything matters so i'll take creating the resume seriously and if you have any questions please comment below i will help you also if you want me to 
review your resume you can comment on the video below and i'll help you with your resume writing thanks a lot for watching this video